Alright folks, we're going to try doing clouds with a palette knife. Uh, this painting that you see was, uh, I believe it's uh, 18 by 24 canvas, something like that. And there's some paintings that I've previously, previously done uh, several, several months ago. Uh, just for kind of fun and stuff, uh, I split it up so I could do two paintings, try different things, whatnot. Now up here you can see those black clouds, uh, and really they're just kind of generic looking, circular, uh, don't have a lot of shape or texture to them. Now take a look at this white cloud right there. Uh, see it's got a lot of texture to it from the palette knife. And uh, I'll show you what uh, what I did uh, to kind of create that effect right now. So uh, I have some Bob Ross, uh, although I'd probably prefer uh, Alexander's because they make thick paint. Uh, this is my palette knife, uh, one of two. Uh, it's kind of one of the ones that are a little bit more flexible. See right there, maybe. Uh, okay, so uh, first thing that I did, uh, so I brought my paint out into a uh, kind of a thin layer of it there, so you, it makes it a lot easier to work with and get your textures uh, instead of a big blob of paint. Okay, get some paint off there. Okay. Now what I did uh, normally. Uh, like when you're wanting paint to break uh, for doing uh, snow covered mountains and stuff you know you normally get a ribbon of paint okay for this not really doing that okay spread it back out and we're going to instead of having it up to where it's going to make a ribbon we're just going to kind of lay a little bit more flat and just kind of get some paint on the end of it there probably got a little bit more than I wanted okay something like that maybe All right. now a little bit closer here Uh, basically, uh, probably what I'm going to do is just try to create, uh, when I'm doing this, not so much think about the shape that I want or, or what I'm trying to go for. I'm just trying to make a, a cloud. Uh, so I'll give it some twists and turns to kind of give it some randomness, if you will, uh, uh, to, to create this, this cloud like I made up here. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's go back, get some more paint. Okay, all right. You see it breaks on there as well, uh, which is good. So that's that's going to kind of help us get the effect. Jut out right here. If you notice that stuff on the end right there, that's that's going to be great because it's you know as you look at clouds, you see that they're not all uh, bunched up together. Sometimes you'll like you'll have a big cloud uh, with some uh, you know obviously air moving through it up there and just creating those little bits of cloud that are breaking off really. Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, so, do that. Grab some more paint. Okay, that's looking great. 
everything kind of come together as you get closer to the end okay and have have some strong parts to it there okay and also don't um, I wouldn't suggest in any way uh, pulling all your paint out when you when you're applying it with the knife uh, don't you know scrape it on out don't do that you know uh, a little bit is fine like in these places right there uh, but you don't want to do it too much uh, or you're going to kind of ruin the uh, textures and effects that you're trying to achieve here I don't really like how that's squared right there so we're going to Add some more right there. Like All right, now this is something that I think I can work with here. I'm gonna put my palette knife away. Now, uh, that white is just where I've done the cloud earlier. So I'm gonna take my uh, one-inch uh, brush, landscape brush, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. All right, and I'm going to take this, and basically what I'm going to do here uh, is I'm just going to work some air into the clouds, as, as you see many people do, and Bob Ross do. You know, three hairs and some air. Uh, you've heard it all before, and we're just going to do the same thing here. We're going to uh, add some uh, uh, like air's moving through it, uh, and we're also going to it's going to kind of break up some of the hardest spots in that cloud. You see, right there right there uh, places like that and what I always do is just use a corner of the brush uh, and just kind of whisk like you're whisking eggs okay and you're just barely going to touch it sorry about the shadow you're barely going to touch it okay Now, um, what I did next uh, is I took my one inch brush, just the same, took a corner of it, and you can probably see it right there, uh, just kind of worked around the edges of it to uh, soften the edges of the cloud, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now on this one. And... And I mean barely getting to the edge of that thing. Okay, you're just going to soften up some of those hard spots, although it's still uh, retaining those broken textures in there uh, from the paint break. Okay. I think it looks pretty neat. I don't, I, I don't know. You do whatever you like. I like uh, doing clouds also with fan brushes. Uh, once in a while I'll do it with this brush uh, it, I guess it just depends on the painter his or herself you know what you prefer but just don't be afraid to try new techniques this is the first time I have done a cloud with a pellet knife and I'm relatively pleased with the effects I'm getting and uh, I think I might do this uh, quite a bit more in uh, future paintings uh, there's something about a pellet knife. I just I think it, they're really super fun to work with. Uh, they're uh, I hate to say this, but it's not as boring as using a brush. Uh, and you just get these amazing textures. Uh, of course, I've heard people you know doing whole paintings with nothing but pellet knives. Of course, you know different sizes and uh, things like that are needed if you're going to do that. Yeah, just look at that. It's coming to life, coming together. Like I said, you just want to work all the way around the cloud. Don't dig into the very thickest parts of the paint. 